Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Disky Chats podcast. Everything about your local football. It's Weedo with another exciting episode. Thank you so much to the guys who keep continue sharing us love and support. Thank you guys for the new subscribers. If this is your first time watching the video, please don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the subscription bell for everything that is good about your local football. So, should we do about to today? Look, the league is gone, Perire, but doesn't mean football stops, okay? Doesn't mean football stops. Only means that uh, we look to, to the new season, pieces and chats, and what happened um, with one of our clubs. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Kaiser Chiefs. We'll see, can you about what went wrong? What happened? It's hard in. Um, with them trying to uh, go back to what they call it, the glory days. I think, don't days, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a Kaiser Chiefs fan myself, and I don't like what's going on with the club at the moment. Never liked it for the last eight years, and I don't like what's going on. So I'm just going to be handling or talk about a few things that contributed factors that I feel could have been rectified a bit more sooner. Um, just dive in a bit deeper to understand, Guti. Uh, what could help them, the team? What 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 ideas could actually be filtered through so we can see a bit of a difference? Because as you can see, they are neighbors and Etlokokop as well. They're making changes. They, you know, they're dominating the league. They've been dominating this 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 Premier League for the last close to now since the two, early two thousands, uh, but in the last eight years or so, uh, whether it's cup, whether it's the league. Um, they've been dominating. So let's just look at what KZ Chiefs has been doing or what can they introduce with what we have seen so far. Like I said, according to me, this is my opinion once more. And this morning with Kenza Galat. But where I'd like to start off with, like I said, my name is Walter. I'm your host. And please uh, continue to like, subscribe, and continue following the channel for more exciting episodes and topics around your local football. Shop. Sure. Now, look, far and gone this season was a terrible season. A terrible season. Like, what we've seen, it's terrible. But let's look at the positives. Let's look at the good side of the great moments of what's been happening and what we can see. There's been glimpses, let's be fair, of some things that are coming in the works, some things that may spark a bit of light. But now the problem is, uh, if we don't see any change, we may see more of the same story, different script type of scenario. And we may see that, look, uh, we don't want to talk about things. Have, have football left our beautiful club? What's going on? And, you know, all these things, should they sell the club? We don't want to get there. You don't want to feel like that. But we want to also just uh, acknowledge a few of the things that may potentially help the club to move forward. Because this is one... Uh, it has a, it's a big club. Of it. it's, it, it's filled with heritage. It's filled with history. The biggest brand, if you may say, in the sub-Saharan Africa. Not only in South Africa, but just Isedek. South neighboring countries, if you may. If not Africa alone. In terms of the brand and international as well, it's well recognized. And we would hate to see such a club falling behind. But the thing is... Uh, about this episode, what I wanted to discuss with you guys is potentially what I've always, if you are a, a follower of football, what we've seen that if they're not careful, um, they won't be new to 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 the you know the the biggest because you are the oldest club doesn't mean you last. But I want to look at the current, probably in the last ten years, what's been going on and what we can expect in the new season. And I don't want to talk about signings now because that's a topic for another day. I want to be able to look at other things uh, in the previous season that's far and gone and maybe two seasons before that and be able to see, you know, just to touch on a few things. So I want to start with the positive, like I said. Um, let me just not waste any more of your time. Look, for me, how the season started, 50% uh, of it was... Uh, warranted, it was needed for me, in my opinion, right? Hear me out. What I mean by that is, them making drastic changes was, um, you know, was necessary for us to be able to see. What we've 
seen is um, taking a step back from the previous coaches. You know, uh, from since Nkata Ramid and Dok, Sati Kevin Han Kangane, Sati, we went back to Stuart Baxter and Sati Uzwan, right? But during that period, we didn't really, or Ikaz achieved that, didn't really make or didn't step back and to be able to see internally what they could rectify. Because now the fans are frustrated because they are looking for the, the continuity of the club that it, it, it was once was, where they compete almost for everything. They play beautiful football at the same time and they win games confidently with flair, you know, filling up stadiums, wanting... The, the fans want to go to the stadiums, but the results are not coming. And the players that they've been buying all of a sudden, very shocking and surprising. But let's look at the, the last season as a benchmark. Uh, I was mentioning the three coaches because I want you to understand where the club came from and what kind of steps they were planning or what probably they were thinking can happen. Now, I want to focus on Atta one. Where he comes from, obviously, he's well-known, he's a player, he's a legend for the club. But he came back and he helped within the youth ranks, uh, within the youth structures. He implemented a lot of things. He implemented um, or instilled a certain identity within uh, the, the, the youth ranks and actually recommending developing other players, which we have seen in, in, in the senior team. Uh, Njabulo Plom is a typical example. He's gone to the U.S. now, as you know. But he, he's one of the guys who are critical and instrumental in his development. Whether he was unearthed by him or not, that's, you know, that's not really important, but he played a part in a certain way. So <clears throat> what I think they were trying to do this season was to change things in a sense where when they used the slogan, rebuilding, I think they were trying to shy away from using international coaches or senior coaches, mind you. And um, Ukeza Jr. was really trying to uh, maybe just freshen things up because they wanted to go back to how they used to do things in the past. Development, development, development. That's fine. But now the problem is with <clears throat> modern football as it's changed and, you know, there are so many things that are happening in our modern football. All these clubs are beefing up. All the clubs are competing for contracts all the clubs are developing young players but now what they've forgotten to do is actually um, recruit good scouts where they can actually unearth talent uh, as much as you would want uh, just young players to fill in a team and have a feeder for your senior team whenever you don't want to sign senior players or you don't want to pay for certain players at, for a certain amount you know obviously to keep the, the club running so that's the first thing I think they were trying to do and also give the, 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 the fans confidence, which is us in this instance, when you're looking from the outside in, it's like, what's really going on in the What kind of meetings are happening there? So what we saw is, or the mistake in that moment when they're still trying to shuffle the pack or, you know, move this player or move this person here or there, it was not... It was a point where they were not as transparent as we would like them to be, in a sense where we don't know who's their scouts exactly. We don't know um, what kind of qualifications the people that they have employed to be their scouts, people who were employed to go out there and, and, and really get uh, or fetch the talent that is fitting, befitting of the Kaiser Chiefs brand, and also who are also are, uh, are aware of the kind of pressure that are involved in the team. At the same time, uh, we can also uh, say that, for me, I feel maybe Uchuna as well was too young for that role. And that's why I think they brought, brought in uh, Umli Fenseki to, to help out in that department. Because remember, sporting director handles everything. He handles the direction from youth to the senior team. So that alone showed you that now... Our club is not really run by uh, the greatest football minds anymore because those people have left because of issues that we cannot confirm. And now we have to uh, entrust our, our faith in whoever is employed, which is Uchuna at this point in time. But we've seen glimpses of them trying to maybe 
not really replace, but start off from that point. Then also Zwane and other people in the youth ranks come in. So people don't understand Uzwane's record, Ugu Youth, where he wasn't exactly... Uh, look, there was an identity. His football does have a certain philosophy, which is very attacking, has glimpses of the old Kaiser Chiefs, but uh, does have these uh, defensive frailties, uh, which maybe also would yield certain results. But they were playing good football. If you've watched the DSTV Challenge, the, 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 the kids there, and also it's attracting that kind of talent because you're attracting young players from different areas of the country wanting to play for the jersey. And which is what maybe they thinking moving forward, if we are saying rebuilding, we're going to start from there. But the scouting department, in my opinion, has been very, very poor. Because now, as you can see, they're the ones who recommend this, that, and that player. And at the same time, we don't exactly know the kind of budget that Kaiser Chiefs has nowadays. Remember, that's why we see sponsorship changes. We see uh, uh, news about them. Uh, clubs, uh, you know, increasing the price whenever Chiefs come in and inquires. At times, we, we see fake news instead of them actually making an inquiry in time because we don't understand the kind of team that is actually surrounding the director. And we don't know exactly. For me, I feel it, it, there's a lot of learnings that they are doing instead of having someone who can hit the ball running and understand the kind of ideas that you can instill from the top going or trickling down to the kind of coach that you need and all these things. Now, I remember an interview with a case a senior this time actually telling us what they wanted to do, going back to what I've just said now. So the problem is this, the people that you are actually employing, like your own son having to come in, not exactly knowing that maybe he understands that role and how tough and, and, and very, very serious it is. I'll make a typical example. Typical example. <clears throat> Yes, sometimes there's money, but they employed a technical director from outside. I think he, his, he, he, his, his CV, he's actually worked with HLs at some point. To so tell you the kind of difference, and if you have someone like that who understands how to run an institution, a football institution, they are able to know when they employ coaches, scouts, the youth ranks, what kind of coaches they are looking for, and when is the readiness in terms of when you develop a coach and you take him to the senior team. So I feel like maybe there was a bit of a rush in a sense where they now first listen to this because yes, 50% is a positive when you start wanting to develop players and give them senior contracts. But now another thing is you rush a coach where you are not exactly sure. He hasn't won anything uh, with DSTV where he was. This is Arthur's one in, uh, in this instance. He hasn't won much, but now he's been given this role where he was also an assistant. Yes, I agree. He was part of, I think, from e e term slightly before mid and top left. He was part of the term. Yaga Kevin Hunt for, for some time. And Yaga uh, Stuart Baxter. Yes, you can say as a coach, I'm a paper worker. His papers are right. He has the right papers. Too. But probably there was a bit of a rush there because he also needed to be assessed. That is he the right coach? Because yes, he understands probably the philosophy because they've seen his results with developing a player. There's a difference there. So those are the kind of issues now you can understand. Where I'm feeling from the outside, if this is the conversations that are going around, but is the understanding because the fans want those results. But remember, football is played in that sense where off the field issues as well do help to see the kind of makeup or the kind of players, the kind of football that we are able to see. You need to have that confidence. So the positive thing is, is the fact that they've employed people who have the same vision. Arthur's one has the vision, same vision, okay, as Juna, as we've seen what they've tried to do. Now, what they did in the last season is, uh, as you would know in the reports, they actually removed all the old players that were actually not performing per se. The numbers were not adding in, in regards to the kind of pedigree, the, the salaries that they were earning. But I feel that that's where the first mistake was. Because what they had done is they already had signed players before the season ended, before we could have known that other ones were going to take over. Probably that was the conversation that they were uh, uh, having because in the previous season before Stuart Baxter, he took over from Kevin Hunt, meaning there was that thing of is, is, is he being interviewed for the draw? Uh, is he a possible replacement if the coach that they have in mind doesn't work out? 
So when you're giving him that run, we can already tell that, yes, he wants to instill because his philosophy is going to be different and probably aligns with the, um, with the vision or, yes, the, with the vision of his sporting tackler or the kind of style of play that they're trying to instill. So what we can agree is, yes, the football that he plays is totally different to a certain degree. And obviously, <clears throat> you are looking at the fact that would they give him the right players and the resources? Now, here's the mistake they make, the 50% now. They go and sign players for him before they can appoint him. We don't know if he was part of that process or not. Oh, yes. Bobby Mtawun, they change his role. He's a team manager still, but we don't know what that means. In a sense that sometimes he has reports of him saying that, yeah, we... Yeah, the technical uh, uh, team needs to decide. So you, you can tell that he doesn't have the same responsibility of saying that he can sign or he can't sign, right? So those are the things, obviously, we've seen okay, sharp. They're now serious about taking the football forward because they want to see some difference. Now, what happens is, again, the philosophy. Obviously, we can tell off the bat that the people that they've brought in, hopefully, they can actually play according to what Arthur Zona wants to instill. Now, what we see is in the next coming of matches is the fact that um, it's, it's not exactly the case when um, the players that they brought in um, to a certain degree, some of them still need to adjust. And now when you think about them identifying the, the, the positions, supposedly, Ukosha, the, the players that they've already taken out and the replacement they're bringing in, the quality is more or less the same. For me, that's where the problems start. Because if you identify a problem and the solution is still the same, you're going to get the same results. For me, it's going to be the same results. Nothing has changed ideally. You've just changed the personnel. Or maybe you're trying to uh, decrease the wage bill because maybe financially as well, maybe you, you, we, we, they're not open as we'd like them to be because they're losing sponsors, as you can tell. So for me, that's another problem <clears throat> that I identify and saying, okay, look, apart from looking at the coach, the coach now has to work with these players that have been bought with undisclosed fees and we can tell that it's not really blockbuster amount. Like, the, I still have a problem with Solomon's, um, Umatlo, George Matlow from Solos. This, this package deal that they've got and the previous season, they also signed. Oh yeah, it's, it's Masati, Matlo and U Solomon. The previous season, they already all, they had signed who was this, who's this winger? <clears throat> it was hot. But Nakona, he took a while to adjust. So you, you can tell that maybe there's issues there. It's a short-term solution. Long-term wise, they're giving us the rebuilding thing, but the, the players that they're signing, the cheap signings that they keep making, is just a short-term because they just want to replace a player at a certain position since they've already offloaded almost 10 players in one season. We're not saying that those players didn't deserve to leave, but you could have maybe kept some of them and show that you are serious about some players who have been underperforming at that particular instance. That I understand. Now, number two, they bring in young players, right? And the players that they bring in, uh, you're going to rely solely or fully on them in a new season. With new players, you've brought in Yusuf, Mart, you've brought in um, uh, Ukele, you've brought, oh, not so cool, okay, but said you've got in Dupree, the ones that they've signed now. This is, I want to, before I go, uh, go with it. Now, all of these players, yes, some of them are, were senior in their clubs, meaning they've played in the Premier League before, but they've never played for a club like Kaiser Chiefs. So you see this dynamic that we have, and now they have to gel, the chemistry has to be right. And you want to play against Sundowns with a chair like a club. They've been dominating the league for the longest time. So those are the issues now you have to contend with. They have a Pirates. They have a team that they, they, the, the recruitment or the players that they bring in is just to add a bit of flavor there. They've got in a new coach, but they kept their, 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 uh, their, the coach from the previous season who can give them understanding of what's going on with the senior team. So these are the clubs that you're competing against. Whereas in your own shop or in your own home, everything that we are seeing is still starting afresh. Now, remember what I said. This is from the technical aspect, which is the sporting director, which is the coach. Now we have the players. 
the, all these three pillars are so important where you are competing against teams where they've established that for a couple of years. Now, this is, I think, where we as fans are not really privy of or not really, we don't go that far to really, really understand what kind of dynamics unfold when you see a team uh, going on the pitch and what goes in day to day. Because now these are the things that you have to look for and you give them targets, <laughs> give them um, uh, what, what they need to achieve for the season. But in reality, it wasn't going to happen. What we are going to, I think what we needed to establish that Kaiser Chiefs being a team that can actually compete for a, a top eight. Because remember the previous season, apart from the one that we were leading by 10 points once upon a time against Ernest, when Ernest was still there, we, it, that wasn't a foregone conclusion. But Kaiser Chiefs now, if you remember, if you go back really well in the last five or eight years, they even have been struggling to reach top eight. So the style of play as well changes a bit. Sharp Atazwan is in. And we see all sorts of problems for me. For me, I think him being a young coach as well, it's exactly that. You've got high-profile players with a bit of you know arrogance, if I may say. Meaning, you got to have a senior coach who knows how to manage these guys. Like you've got your Keegan Tolly, you've got Itukude, you've got Upiliat. I mean, those players are influential. Abu Eric Mato, you, you, you can tell that probably at some point, maybe there was that, a bit of fear from his side to really open up to these guys. Or maybe there was a bit of sabotage, uh, in a sense, where they can influence the team in a certain way. If you lose the dressing room, if you lose the dressing room, you're going to have problems. Now, that's a huge responsibility on its own, apart from you competing. So for me, I feel... That those are the kind of things that you, you can look into and see that you want these players to win your cups. You want these players to go against Sundowns, who has been dominating, who has been playing the most the best football. But what they did, they sorted themselves out in regards to the club itself before they can even assess or bring in a player. Now, I want to bring in the scouting side of things and leave it there. We don't know who the scout. By the way, I've been trying to get who is scouting these players. They get players who come there into assessment, which we've never seen that for a while where uh, free agents are coming to try. Now, I understand that probably it's because he, they've been telling us it's because of, um, you know, some clubs perform it, other smaller teams. When it comes to Kaza Chiefs, it's a big thing. But now, the thing is as well, is that that's where the inexperience comes in. Because if you really... Uh, you, you, you've you identified a role or a position that you are, that, that there's a need for it. You ask, you, you, this is where the technical teams come in. So um, you can tell that he needed a second assistant, which they didn't appoint him for, because when the previous coach came in, he had two assistants. And you need someone who's knowledgeable about the football aspects, the dynamics, and also looking at you're going to be playing more than 30 games preparations, injuries, physio. I mean, I've seen Piso. Piso comes with the whole, his own team. So I feel him, his inexperience, again, you want to test out a, 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 these ideas on a big team. On a, you want to have a project on a big team like Kaiser Chiefs. So I feel like they're telling us school fees, by the way. Um, you make people try, yeah, they don't, some of them don't pass the assessments, then supposedly you bring in a player that we have never seen before. Maybe you've seen on YouTube alone. And I'll admit, I was a fan of Caleb once upon a time. Me, I was. I was a fan of Caleb. Uh, I thought he would really show um, some promise there because obviously he started scoring well and he came in, but he was a bit lanky, he's tall. So we're thinking, uh, now there's... Maybe there's, there's an idea that he wants to... We don't, we're not exactly sure what he wants to instill because we can tell that doesn't like to take attacking football, but we're not exactly sure how he's going to utilize the striker because we've seen that U2P is not exactly an out-and-out -out striker. That happens after a certain number of games that we've seen that the players that they put in, it's not enough. So, as you can see, that's why I'm saying that that whole management there is a problem that they don't want to admit to. It can't be just a family business because these examples that we've just talked about or the mishaps where they win games, that are, they, they lose games that are not supposed to win. They win games that we were not expecting them to win. 
or they themselves didn't expect to win. They were just hoping. Luck can take you so far. So um, football, one thing you must know that it doesn't lie. And eventually you get caught out. And eventually it will show if you're, you're just using short-term results and you're just using more of, a, a, you know, you're changing things, but you're not exactly changing your way of thinking or you're doing things. But just because you change one player and you recruit this one doesn't mean exactly doing the same thing. Because, for example, simple example, you, you take out Ocado and you bring in Ocuinic. And for me, that was really, really a dumb move because these guys are the same. The only difference is the age. One is experience, one is just like 24, 26, whatever the case may be. But the output is the same. So for me, um, a lot of things need to be done there in a sense where they need to bring in a, a bit more people to help them out. It's no longer about the family business. It's about the, the, the history that the club carries and the people who care about the club. Because these examples that I've made, and um, we can only show you that Ika is achieved right now. Uh, why I say there's a crisis is because if the, these issues I've mentioned, regardless of the players that they're bringing in, by the way, players cannot just solve the problem that I'm talking about. Because we've heard NS and a couple of coaches saying there's a lot of interference. Meaning, Upo was accused of that. The change that I'm talking about, probably that's what they wanted him to do, just to step back and allow a coach to do whatever he wants to do. Now, they've given Otazwan another chance in the new season, which we have seen. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of, um, you know, but for me, I think, to be honest with you, we've seen enough for him to know that he's not ready. But um, for me, one thing I wanted to mention also is the spending. For them not wanting to spend in the market, to go for players that they actually need and they can't compete in the market because they always want to buy cheap players and free agents, these things. Let's be fair, guys. Let's be honest. If that continues, best believe next season, 2022, is it 2023, 2024 season? We're going to see the same thing. So that's what I'm saying. If we don't wake up now, we do have a crisis at Kaiser Chiefs. So for me, that's where I can leave it, guys. Uh, for me, leave a comment, um, leave your comments or your opinions or your views in the comment section. Tell me what you think, because there's a lot of things we can talk about. We can go the whole day. But for me, far and gone this season, those are the part of the, I feel, things that we don't see behind the scenes for me. Uh, that's my opinion about it. I feel like uh, regardless of whoever player you recruit, they have to sort themselves out, uh, sort themselves out nicely. They need to bring in the right uh, people are knowledge about football who knows how the football uh, can tick like a wolf can I we saw talk Dr. Kumali. We don't know if they want they're planning to plan uh, bring him in in some way to help Atazwani. We've had reports of them having to come with a second assistant, which I've been praying and saying for the whole season. So for me, that's it. Thank you so much, guys, for coming back to my channel. Please uh, continue to support. Keep liking the the, the video. Click sharing it with your friends and keep on subscribing. For me, that's it for now. Check you, uh, check you guys ne uh, next week. Bye for now.